the film that I saw that I want to bring to your attention is this thing called The People versus uh, versus George Lucas. Now, The People I'm versus George. I'm on Team George, People with this one. I'm I I, I am yeah, on Team yeah. People too. People. Yeah. Woo! Now. Yeah. <laughs> this was a very interesting documentary directed by uh, uh, Alexandra Philippe, and the movie is not necessarily a takedown of Star Wars and how people feel as if George Lucas destroy the legacy of this thing that he has. It really, it's a little bit of that, but it also takes into account when the Star Wars films came out, uh, the impact that they had on people's childhood and the idea that it spawned a whole generation uh, worth of filmmakers, and also gets into once something becomes that big, who owns it? it does, is, is it the people's thing or is it George Lucas's thing to do whatever he wants with? So when George Lucas started coming out with the special edition with the new scenes and the new CGI and he came out with it on VHS and DVD and uh, the special editions and whatnot, Laserdisc, at what point does George have a right to do what he wants with the film or at what point is basically do, do the people say, look, I don't want you to mess with this film that I love so much, you're ruining it. And then, and hang on, then, then because Wade has amazing yeah, thoughts on this. Wade, Wade will go nuts. Powerful And thoughts. then the film gets into the prequels and how everybody was completely heartbroken about the prequels. And it gets into some interesting areas and what's great about the film is that it's very well cut because interspersed with all of these talking heads about people talking about Star Wars and how they loved it and how they learned to hate it but how they still love it and I hate you George Lucas, whatever it is. They intersperse all of these fan-made movies. And there are thousands of these fan-made movies. I'm mm -hmm. sure you guys have done them at home. You know, you've talked about doing it, whatever. Maybe you've written fan fiction. But they intercut all these little fan-based movies, claymation, animation, live action, low budget, medium budget, and it's very well edited. And the, it's just a very interesting film called The People vs. George Lucas. They just got themselves a sales company. And in case you don't know, the sales company is in charge of uh, getting the film distribution. Sales company will meet with distributors. Domestically and around the world. That's right. Mm -hmm. They'll meet with uh, distributors and yeah. they'll say, we got this great film, let's make a deal. Hopefully a distributor will pick this thing up because it is fantastic. Now we have a clip of it to give you guys a sense of it. Let's take a look. Greedo never shot first. It's ruined. No, it's how is Yes, it, it is. George, you must own up to your mistake. I don't know what I would do if I met George Lucas in the street. If I'd want to shake his hand or hit him in the stomach. Can you be that mad at a man who made Star Wars? The man made Star Wars. There is something about our love for Star Wars that is different from our love for other things. True Star Wars is not out there! Is it here? It's funny that this can make people angry, but it does make you angry. Like, don't you ever say it's just the film. It's not just... It, 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 you know, people versus George Lucas, it, it's actually quite good. And it really is an interesting question. At what point does George Lucas have a right to tinker? Or what point is it basically just our movie and he but should just go let away? Me, let, me, uh, let me argue the flip side of the coin. You notice how no one ever brought this issue up with Gene Roddenberry in Star Trek. There was always complete and total harmony between Gene Roddenberry and the equally rabid group of Star Trek fans. The, the movie Fanboys which we both liked, actually makes fun of that whole rivalry between Star Wars fans and Star Trek fans, and you know, they're beating up the Star Trek fans as they go across the country. I mean, those are kind of the two rabid fan groups, and they're equally rabid, but Star Trek fans were always in harmony with Gene Roddenberry because Gene Roddenberry understood the fans and what they wanted, and he understood how to sort of shepherd everything in their direction and create a harmonious universe. I don't think George Lucas has ever really understood what fans see in Star Wars. I think, I think it kind of, I think he's disconnected in a very, very unfortunate way from his own fans. I think he's very connected to the material and what he wants it to be, but I don't think he's a very connected to the real world kind of guy. You don't see him going to conventions and shaking hands with people who love Star Wars like Gene Roddenberry would. You don't see him immersing himself in the popular culture. He's still very much an ivory tower guy, and I think that's part of the problem. And, and I think part of the problem, too, is that uh, Lucas, by his own admission, and we're not going to disagree with him, is a lousy writer. Yeah. And I think what happened was with Lucas, he became more interested in the technology, in the THX sound system, yeah. and all the CGI toys. You know, he became a lousy writer, he became a lousy director of actors, and I think he'd probably admit that because of, essentially he just became a technical director. I, I, George Lucas is a really sad figure because he's a very much an, an M. Night Shyamalan, I'm serious, he's, he's kind of an M. Night Shyamalan figure in that sense. THX is a terrific film with a lot of interesting ideas and, and some very, very provocative themes 
And uh, from that, he just kind of seemed to, to ramble. And I don't think he's ever found his footing again. I think he sort of, in a Faustian way, betrayed his own intellectual foundations, uh, which is, it, you know, he's entitled to, but I just think it's sad. Um, one other point I would make, too, uh, with respect to this, I don't know if it's covered in the movie, but Patton Oswalt, who may well be the funniest man in the world, does, there's a there's part of his uh, 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 one of his albums where he says you know I've often thought what I would do if I had a time machine and I think I would probably go back in time and and kill George Lucas with a shovel before he had a chance to make the Phantom Menace and it's really it's unbelievably funny and it's funny because you go I still agree with that not only do I agree with that but after all these years I still don't know who the Phantom Menace was who was that guy? who was he was it R two D two I don't know who was I don't know. It was a phantom to me. Yeah, anyway. It to do with trading and right, I, trade federations. Oh, my God. <laughs> trade federations. Who gives an F? Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, People versus George Lucas. It does not have a distributor yet. Hopefully, it'll get one. But you go on the website, by the way. These are free plugs. These guys don't even know I'm talking about it. Uh, PeopleVersusGeorgeLucas.com. You'll really enjoy it.